Hello everyone, this is Ahmed and welcome back to another anatomy tutorial where we are going to be talking about the spleen, its anatomical features, uh, um, the topography of the spleen inside the abdominal cavity. As you know, the spleen is one of the intra-abdominal intra organs uh, located normally or depending on the animal species on the left side, uh, caudal to the diaphragm inside the cranial part of the abdominal cavity and in this video we will also look at the comparative anatomy between some animal species the spleen is located on the left side uh, inside the intrathoracic part of the abdominal cavity in the horse this is the dorsal extremity or the base of the spleen where down here we have the apex or the ventral extremity and this is here the parietal surface of the spleen why the visceral surface of the spleen in the horse is subdivided into what's called the gastric impression or the gastric surface. This is the surface where the spleen is attached to the stomach. Uh, caudally here we can uh, see the intestinal uh, impression or intestinal uh, surface of the spleen. Uh, while dorsally uh, they're highlighted in blue as you can see we have the renal impression where the spleen comes uh, in contact with the left kidney on the visceral surface here we can see also the helos of the spleen where the uh, splenic artery enters the spleen and splenic vein exits the spleen in this area we can uh, find also small lymph nodes related to the spleen. The spleen is attached to the stomach by what's called the gastrosplenic ligament, this one here which is part of the omentum. So as you can see there, here we can see the greater or part of the greater omentum here. This is the greater omentum. And as we said before, you know, the gastrosplenic ligament is part of this omentum, as you can see here, extends between the spleen and the stomach. In the horse, an additional ligament is present and extends between the spleen and the left kidney. This is here the rhinosplenic ligament. The rhinosplenic ligament extends, as we said, between the spleen and the left kidney, creating what's called the rhinosplenic space, rhinosplenic space in which uh, parts of uh, small intestine or large intestine can become trapped resulting in colic. To be able to understand what does it mean uh, look at this drawing here we can see how the pelvic flexor which is part of the ascending colon is trapped uh, into uh, this space uh, dorsal to the spleen as you can see in this picture causing what's called colic in horse and now let's look at the surrounding structures here before we move and look at the spleen in situ uh, here we can uh, find the small intestine uh, they are covered here by, by, by the mesentery of the uh, descending colon so this is here the descending colon let's look at it exactly here we can see the descending colon with with the tenian uh, the descending colon as we learned before it has two tenia um, this is the muscular pants and uh, this is also part of the descending colon which has uh, relatively very long mesentery the mesocolon here let's take it out so as you can notice here it has really very long mesentery in the left view here uh, caudal to the diaphragm this is the diaphragm we can see the liver the stomach and this is the spleen here in this area we can see the dorsal and the ventral colon this is here, 
the two doors and ventral colon forming in this area the diaphragmatic flexor this one here on the diaphragm and that one is the sternal flexor of the ascending colon so diaphragmatic flexor and that one is the sternal flexor because it's located on the sternum Here we can see how the left lateral hepatic lobe is fixed in its position to the uh, diaphragm by the triangular ligament. So from the left lateral hepatic lobe to the diaphragm, here we can see the left uh, triangular ligament of the liver. Caudal to the liver, we can see the stomach here in this area with the body in this area. Dorsally, there we have the fundus. This one. Here we have the lesser curvature of the stomach, and here we have the greater curvature of the stomach where the spleen lies on the stomach and now let's uh, look at the spleen in situ and the horse as you can see here inside the intrathoracic part of the abdominal cavity on the left side we can see the spleen in the horse the spleen is triangular shaped as you can see here dorsally there we can find the ligament which extends between the spleen and the left kidney the renosplenic ligament this one there which create dorsally the renosplenic space in which parts of uh, the intestines can become trapped resulting in colic this is the ligament between the spleen and the left kidney here this area Dorsally there between the spleen and the diaphragm we can also see the phrenico-splenic ligament and between the spleen and the stomach here we have the gastrosplenic ligament Now let's look at the spleen of the dog as you can see here the spleen start, start dorsally on the left side and moves ventrally uh, toward the midline here it follows uh, somehow the greater curvature of the stomach so this is the stomach and this is the greater curvature of the stomach between the spleen and the stomach we can find here uh, the gastrosplenic ligament which is part of the omentum or great omentum The spleen is supplied by the splenic artery, splenic artery which we can see in this area here. The splenic artery gives a lot of pressure to the spleen and actually the splenic artery comes from the celiac artery and the best way to find the splenic artery is just to hold the spleen in your hand and pull it in the way that you can feel the splenic artery inside the greater momentum as you can see here. If you follow the splenic artery you can find how it comes uh, from the celiac artery the lenal artery or splenic artery gives a lot of branches to the spleen and uh, finally gives also an another branch to the stomach the left gastrobibloic artery in case of splenic neoplasia or splenic rupture or torsion for example in this case we need to remove the spleen completely in this case uh, don't forget please, that we are not allowed to uh, close the splenic artery or ligate the splenic artery completely. As we mentioned before, uh, there are some very important branches uh, from the splenic artery to supply the stomach, uh, which is the left gastrobibloic artery and the short, short artery, gastric arteries. And in this case, uh, uh, the splenic tomy includes individual ligation of short branches of the splenic artery and vein uh, here at the helos. 
preserving the left gastric artery and short gastric arteries. In ruminants, the dorsal sac of the rumen, as we learned before, adheres to the dorsal abdominal wall and to the diaphragm, as you can see here. And here the spleen adheres also to the dorsal sac of the rumen and as you can see half of the spleen extends into the retroperitoneal attachment zone between the diaphragm and the dorsal sac of the rumen. <laughs>